Starts when I can be in the meeting, sir. Pardon me? It starts when I can be in the meeting. Oh, okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Camille. To start, I'm joined by my colleagues, uh, Paul Kikorian and Nuri Martinez. We are going to uh, take up items two, three, five, nine, and one. I'm sorry, one, two, three, five, nine. Uh, we've got some comment cards on that. And we will be continuing item seven. Item seven. Okay, so Mr. Clerk. All right, sir. Item number one is communication from the mayor relative to the reappointment of Mr. Ray Biedernost to the Board of Convention Tourism for the term ending June 30th, 2021. Item two concerns Community Redevelopment Agency of Los Angeles Bond Oversight Committee report relative to approval to appropriate $162,078 in CRA LA excess bond proceeds from the Pacoima Panorama City Redevelopment Project area for infrastructure improvements. Item number three concerns a Joint Workforce Development Board and Employment and Workforce Development Department report relative to approval of the city's application for local workforce development board recertification by the state of California for program years 2016 through 18 as required by the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Item number five, CRA LA Bond Oversight Committee report relative to approval to appropriate $1,871,370 and CRA LA designated local authority excess bond proceeds from the East Hollywood Beverly Normandy redevelopment project area within Council District 13 for improvements of com community facilities. And finally, item number nine, Economic and Workforce Development Department reports relative to program year 2016-17 Day Labor Resource Center operators request for proposals and final recommendations. Okay, thank you. Uh We've got uh, two, uh, two speakers on those items, Mr. Herman and Mr. Spindler. Would you come to the table? Okay, what? okay. all right, you may, uh, you may begin, item uh, one. Okay, so, so hey, we'd like to think that we got Ray Bittermost to the Board of Convention and Tourism and for the term ending in 2021. Well, by the time 2021 comes around, city going to be in the bankruptcy proceeding. So I would shorten that term to 18 months, like, like typical prison sentences over there in the, in the Superior Court, Criminal Court Division 30. They, they give you usually the 18 months. So the term should be 18 months. So, so please modify that to, to reflect it should be 18 months. And then we got this criminal organization, the C-R-A-L-A, and they are moving on up like the ghetto, and they're going to go into the EO to get out of the money of the ghetto. All the time, they're always going in the ghetto every time, getting money out and out of the ghetto. When are we going to stop this? When we going to stop getting all crazy with the CRA, Jerry Brown, who's, who's unlike myself, he's a white man, he done get rid of the CRA, and he get lots of problems for that, but he done good thing. $162,078 in excess bond proceedings from Pacoima and Panorama City. 
And they had to go to criminal court to wonder why Pacoima Beautiful was trying to take all that goddamn money for themselves. But I'm glad, thank God, that Pacoima Beautiful didn't get that money and hopefully $162,078 will go to do good things like fix streets under Willits. And then we get this number three, well, Job Workforce Development Board. We don't have to have no work board because nobody allowed to work in L.A. If you work in L.A., you get arrested. Selling shea butter, you get arrested. Try to do legal work, you get arrested. Joint Workforce Development Board can't give you no job. Everybody get arrested. Nobody can work because they get arrested. And that got to stop. First, you got to disband the LAPD. Then you can have a joint workforce development ball, but as long as the LAPD done going around in the ghetto and everybody else arresting niggas like myself, I cannot work. I cannot have no joint workforce development ball giving me any goddamn money for my goddamn job. And I've been trying to retrain ever since May 13th. I've been trying to train. Nobody going to hire me with a felony arrest for the Joint Workforce Development Board. Yeah, please keep on the topic. Well, it completely is, sir. And especially as an African American, I should be able to talk about this Joint Workforce Development Board. The fact that I got an arrest and I've been in fucking goddamn discriminating against the LAPD. I can't goddamn work in the Joint Development Board. Ain't going to give me no job. Everybody I know going to get the job. And they can't do it if they got an arrest record which is why we're going to be transitioning the band of box issue. And that's why Joint Workforce Development Board cannot take up the matter until number four is resolved because many people got arrest and conviction records for all this petty goddamn stuff. And a man's got to be able to retrain and rework, and you ain't letting him do it. Now we get to number five. Back to the CRALA Bond Oversight Committee doing the wheezy deal, moving on up, transitioning the GEO money from the ghetto, this time in Hollywood, District 13. Now, they got all those liquor licenses in, in the District 13, and they're just using the CRA money to prop up the liquor licenses, so then you've got to pay off the cops so that you've got to get the tourists in there and get all those Queen B fees on redevelopment. It's all a big lie. And anybody talk about that, they get shot. But fortunately, thank God I got a bullet here and I can talk about this shit. And that's why CRL is out of business and that's why the million, $871,370 has got to go back to the taxpayers for the Willard settlement. And then we get finally Day Labor Resource Center. Well, that's for all the illegals that come across the border. They say, Que pasa? And they say, Quiero trabajar. And you go, go to the Day Labor Resource Center. But the problem is, is that other people crossing the border got no papers. So if they don't do what the people say, they're going to get arrested by LAPD and deported. So when you have day laborers, give them protection from us. Your time is up. Next. Hi, I'm from Nuri's area in Van Nuys where I was at last night at the Health Committee Commission and we talked about reappointments. But this item, number one, has to do with BIDMOS for the Board Convention of Tourism. I've been to this racist convention meeting. I wasn't too happy. They didn't like my little nigger ass in there. But now I'm going to the item number. You said two, right? Because seven was canceled. So when I was down there at the Community Redevelopment Agency, y'all, it was called the CRLA. I grew up in that shit in Poor Heights. Oversight Committee report to approve $162,000. Proceeds for Pacoima. But see, when I was in Poor Heights, I was an arrestee living in my little home for 15 years under rent control and the motherfuckers threw me out. Threw the little motherfucker out. Now the homeless motherfucker lives down in Pacoima for redevelopment project area. There's no infrastructure shit going on down there. The streets are horrible. I was there last night. Yeah. 
I was there last night. No meeting on health committee. Fuck you, Sharp. Now going to item number three. Workforce development. Employment workforce. You know, this morning when I sat here with Zev, Zev brought up all these issues about how Please stay on the topic. Pardon me? I'm on the topic. I'm on the goddamn topic. Development department. EWDD. EWDD. Report to the relative approved cities application for local workforce development. You goddamn know well there's no work. Men 40 age my age don't got no fucking jobs to pay the rent. Our bitches don't want to stay with us. So they send us out on the street. So the niggas, right? I know what I'm talking about. I do know, Mr. Demille, I've been in a situation where the workforce development is racist. I know. Very racist. I wave my flag. The American people love it. Because they know us Americans don't got jobs. Now going into my favorite number. Number six. The Zozo Six. Six, six, six. Report of the Chief Legislative Analyst for the CLA. Well, it should respond to local elected officials' agreement that complies with Public Works and Gang Reduction Committee. But you all forget it. Regarding Mr. Spindler, the gentleman who got a, arrested by a gentleman by the name of Mr. Nava, a male detective, serial number 31586 for the record, detained Mr. Spindler because he was speaking his mind. He drew on some cards under Brandenburg versus Ohio, Dennis versus the U.S., and Whitney, little Whitney versus the U.S. Criminal threats because a person drew on a card regarding public works and gang reduction committee. My ass. My ass. Don't, don't silence a speaker, namely because Congress shall make no law abridging limits to freedom of speech under the due process of clause, Mr. Krikorian, who has his back against me. First Amendment and 14th Amendment regarding public works gang reduction. So you see you all, I was down at the LAPD police commission and advocating for the American people, talking about the murders of African Americans by the slaughter of the men in blue, rank and file who go out there, who take orders like Mr. Nava, Serial number 31586. So I know when I'm on public works gang reduction item number six. Welcome in, Mr. Sedil. Welcome in. I was speaking about what's on my mind this afternoon as I participated in the police commission meeting and also when I was here at 9 o'clock participating, Ms. Nuri, under the health, health committee. Health and mental health for people who don't know what the fuck to do when public works and gangs reduction don't help them find housing, help them find work, and best of all to all our children, holler out to you, Zuma dog. Hooty hoot. We don't got no jobs on education, so we start off at minimum wage. Speaking his mind, Advocate Herman. Thank you all. Okay, your time is up. Okay, members, without objection, we'll take items one, two, three, five, and nine on consent. Without objection, that will be the order. Well, now we'll take up item four. Item number four, Bureau of Contract Administration report relative to an enforcement strategy for the Los Angeles Fair yeah. Chance Initiative, a.k.a. Ban the Box Ordinance. I want to thank everyone for their input and participation in this uh, very uh, important, uh, important topic. We know it's an issue at the national level, state level, and local level. And so we appreciate the input that we've received uh, from a variety of sources on it. Uh, we're going to be taking uh, testimony. Several have, uh, have uh, filled out cards. So we will be hearing testimony. We're not going to take any action today. 
uh, so that we continue, so we can continue to cook it in a way that uh, uh, I think will be satisfactory to, to most. Uh, but having said that, uh, let's, uh, let's begin the public comment. You'll have a minute. Uh, and we'll begin with Jody Clark. Kenyatta Baker, Rod Wright. Can we get one more chair? Officer, can put another chair there for three. Should I start? Ms. Clark? Yes, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, number one, I want to thank Councilmember Price and uh, all of the hard work that you have done uh, related to this Fair Chance Initiative. I am a community volunteer. I've worked with many of the coalition groups here, um, LA Voice, Homeboys. Most importantly, I work very closely with, with Beit Shuva and I volunteer there and I'm also on the campaign committee for Bend the Ark. This initiative is extremely important um, I think you all are aware of the consequences, and we are very f hopeful that this initiative will pass. However, we do need an enforcement so that we can help to ensure that these members have an opportunity, a fair chance, an opportunity to work and to return to society and be a part of the society. We thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Ms. Baker. Hi, my name is Kenyatta Bakir, and yeah, first sorry. of all, I would like to thank you, Councilmember Price, for um, leading this initiative. Um, this is very important to um, many members in this room. Um, we have Homeboy Industries, LA Voice, uh, also Isla Academy, and many Jewish organizations. I am currently a college professor and was previously um, a, a principal with Los Angeles Unified School District and encountered many parents um, who were students. Um, and also trying to um, come into the field of early childhood education as well as just getting a job. And so having um, uh, this uh, to be enforced would be, um, would be <laughs> extremely, extremely helpful in parents be, um, receiving jobs and ultimately being able to take care of their families. So I'm, I'm hopeful that this measure will continue to move and it will um, be enforced. Thank you. Thank you. Senator? How are you? Uh, Mr. President, members, uh, on this item, I think you've received the draft that was done by a coalition of community groups. Having looked at the BCA report, there are a couple of recommendations that we would make if that's going to go forward as the final idea. One of the issues becomes in the first offense, it says up to $500. Well, up to can be zero or $500. That item clearly needs a floor because if there's no incentive, then the, if there's no floor as opposed to a ceiling, then uh, there's no incentive for people to participate. In the community draft, one of the other things that was there was including licenses that the city does. In addition to the employment, the city issues a number of licenses to open up a nightclub, to open up an auto parts store or, or a tow truck system requires a license. We believed that that too should be included as a part of the box system. The other thing that we would hope as I've run out of time, sir, um, is that in the draft done by the BCA, there is a confusion that it attempts to specify specific positions as opposed to just saying we'll follow the state law. For example, if you're working in law enforcement or in health, there are specific codes in the state that specify that those positions are exempt. Without trying to get into all of them, all this ordinance needs to say is that all of those positions that are granted exemptions in state law, since you can't override them anyway, without trying to specify them, because the problem is that if you miss one, then there's confusion as to what did it mean and what did you mean. State law is clear here. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Thank I you, Senator. We're able to do those three and amend the BCA report then. I think we have something good going forward. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David Ratney, Amber Rose Howard, uh, Wayne Felton, and Marcus Allgood. Anybody?
Do I go first? Yes, why don't you go first? Okay. Uh, so good afternoon, council members uh, and, and other colleagues. My name is David Rattray. I'm the executive vice president of education and workforce development. And I'm coming here to, uh, to express our support and concerns with the fair chance ordinance that is before you today. Um, first of all, I, I want to make sure you all know that we're fierce advocates for the issue. The goals of this ordinance um, we think are, are really enlightened and visionary. And we're fiercely then uh, supportive and committed to helping those that are formerly incarcerated or have any kind of records uh, be successful in employment. And to that end, I have a staff member here, Heather Burtsall. She's the director of Smart Justice. And I have another staff member, that Lisa Small, that works in the, uh, the youth camps. And I would suggest there's no chamber in a country that would have two full-time staff members that their sole job is to help people um, find employment. My one concern is I think that you should consider a slight amendment to this ordinance. It's an, uh, an and or kind of issue around uh, allowing the issue to come up in the interview process. We think that's advisable and will actually be constructive and helpful. And so um, we'd love to work with any of the council members and, and give our support to helping this be successful, but with the suggestion of a very small amendment that we think is meaningful. Okay, well, as I said, we're, we're gonna be continuing this so that we can uh, uh, continue to uh, clarify and, and, and um, um, make sure we're covering all the bases, and so we'll take that into consideration as well. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, uh, I wanted to begin. I want to thank uh, the Prices Office for the work on the Fair Chance Initiative. I, I appreciate it. Um, and I'm, I'm with ISLA LA. My name is Marcus Alkett. I'm the local organizing committee chairperson there with ISLA LA, Office Lawson, and um, also a partner with LA Voice. And our concern, well, my, my personal story, I have a brother that um, has been in and out of the, the prison system. A lot of it has to do with him not being able to get a job. Um, when my mother's uh, restaurant closed, um, I could see his heartbreak, that he knew that it was going to be difficult getting the job. So my concern is, is um, regarding the enforcement mechanism to make sure that it has enough um, bite, enough teeth to, um, if, if someone does discriminate against someone that has a felony, that there's some sort of repercussions. I understand, I looked at the, the um, oh, that's my time. Thank you. Hello. Um, Councilmember Price, we thank you so much um, and the work that your office has um, been leading um, and all other members, we thank you so much for the support that you've been giving and the feedback. Um, so my name is Amber Rose Howard. I am an organizer for All of Us or None, which is a national organizing effort to strengthen the voices of formerly incarcerated people. Um, we focus mainly on the collateral consequences that happen once you're convicted of a criminal um, of a criminal act. And so what we think is the most important thing is the conditional offer of hire because someone like myself who has a college degree, who's active in the community, who is active um, in all sorts of social justice forums, um, would say that no one would get to know those things about me if they asked about my felony background, which I also have, before they had the chance to get to know me. Also, we think that in the enforcement um, for the BCA's recommendations, that a minimum of 250 instead of 500, instead of up to 500, um, should be a place in there as well because we need to incentivize folks to come forward. We've read NELP's reports, we've read other cities' reports, and the feedback that they've been getting from their public and from their voters is that without a minimum to um, give to the complainant, then folks are not coming forward. And that's been the sort of national recommendation to make the strongest piece. And I think that, um, Council Member Price, you as well as I've heard the mayor say um, that we want Los Angeles to have the strongest uh, fair chance ordinance. And I think that's the way we get it done. Thank, Thank you. you. Next. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, my name is Wayne Felton. I'm with Isla LA, partner of um, LA Voice. And the Fair Chance Initiative affects me. Uh, I, I myself happen to be a, a recipient of a Fair Chance. Yeah, I'm formerly incarcerated, and uh, I work now as a, or as a legal assistant since 2003. And, uh, 
and without without the chance of employment, I wouldn't be able to do many of the things that I did do, and <clears throat> and that was I was effective in the community. I was a youth football coach, starting at Athens Park, and some of the some of the kids that I have coached, they're in college now. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Okay, next up, Marcus Allgood, Richard Cabral. You just called him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Tim uh, Coin Coinse, Coinsgay, Paul Young. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Tim Cornegay, and I'm with LA Voice, a faith-based community organization that represents 55 congregations throughout Greater Los Angeles. We want to thank uh, Councilman Price's office and the other participating councilmen for the work on Fair Chance. And we are charged to see it pass because this important ordinance reestablishes the city's belief and giving individuals who have made mistakes in their lives, mistakes that have activated the criminal justice system, a chance to involve themselves in self-improvement as they work possibly to reintegrate into a workforce that has previously been adverse to their acceptance. I am one of those individuals I speak of. Also, most importantly engages the restoration of hope for many, but in order for this to work, most effectively, Fair Chance has to have the most innovative and progressive enforcement package to ensure compliance from potential employers so they understand the city's belief and support of this initiative. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Seven years ago, I was released from prison. Door after door, I entered seeking employment. And door after door, I was rejected. Homeboy Industries gave me an opportunity when nobody else would. Nobody cared. Nobody cared that I had no money to feed my family, for I was just an ex-convict in their eyes. I and others today have proven we are more than what a court file says we are. We have proven we are not our worst mistake. Society has made a mistake, and now we are correcting it. By this, by this bill, people must be liable for being unfair, held accountable for unjust acts. Words in our society only go so far. Action is what our society responds to. Employers who fa fail to live up to this change must pay the consequences as we did. What good is a new law if our people do not believe in it? Thank you. Thank you. Is there Paul, Paul Young, Maria Alexander, Vivian Rothstein, Abraham Havi, Havi? Ely Hildado. Hildado. Thank you, uh, Maria Alexander. As executive director of a nonprofit in Van Nuys that specializes in employment services for those transitioning from incarceration. We see daily the struggles and difficulties of those with convictions to obtain meaningful jobs, advance their careers, and even to obtain minimum wage warehouse jobs. We can provide paid job training, but it means nothing if our local employers continue to exclude us. And I say us because I myself have been incarcerated and have many convictions. It is a luxury for me to have the opportunities that I do and work in a field where my background is an asset, but most of our people do not have that luxury, which is why we want LA to be the leader in the strongest enforcement in the nation. Um, so that the policy does have teeth. In our work with employers for over 14 years, uh, that has showed us that they will continue to exclude us without a significant penalty. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to address the committee. My name is Abraham Havivi. I'm a rabbi and a psychiatrist. 
I'm an adjunct faculty member at American Jewish University and UCLA, and I'm a member here of Ikar and Ben the Ark, both Jewish organizations. In Judaism, we believe in the doctrine of tshuva, or penitence, repentance, and our belief is that once a person has atoned for their sin, the, sl the slate is wiped clean, and they can start fresh. That's the reason that I support the Fair Chance Initiative. Uh, I think Judaism would say that once a person has offended and has done their time, there should be, they should be able to re-enter society with their individual human dignity intact and with a higher likelihood of becoming productive, contributing citizens. That's why I support this ordinance. Thank you. My name is Ellie Hidalgo, and I am part of the leadership team of Dolores Mission Church in Boyle Heights, as well as part of LA Voice. And as a Catholic and a Christian, my faith in, in God and in Jesus, one of the things that calls to me about this Fair Chance Initiative is how Jesus forgives so many people over and over and over. And I think in particular of the prodigal son, where he is given a second chance. And this story is being told in churches all over and congregations all over L.A. Uh, because it's so powerful. It's being told 2,000 years later. And I feel like all of you have the opportunity to help the next generation be able to tell their great stories, their great stories of transformation, of redemption, of forgiveness. And this initiative allows us to be able to create those kinds of great stories. And I hope that it has a strong enforcement portion to it, because that will just make it more real. Thank you. Thank you. We'll call again Vivian uh, Rothstein, uh, Mark Glucksman, Emma Taylor, Erica Vargas, Okay, could you please turn to page four of that June 9th document? Uh, my name is Mark Glucksman. I'm a member of Ben the Ark and Leo Beck Temple, and I'd like to suggest some wording changes to strengthen the fourth bullet on that page that reads that your recommendation is to proactively monitor job posting websites for violations, which is what you want to do. And at the end of the bullet, it says, conduct, essentially conduct random audits, which is another what. And why do you want to do this? Because you want the city to permit DAA-initiated complaints, which I think is the primary purpose of that bullet. So I would suggest uh, two bullets, one that says permit DAA-initiated complaints, the second one that says enable the DAA to proactively monitor job posting websites for violations and to conduct random audits. And as long as you've already supported DAA-initiated complaints, uh, I suggest that you look at the, uh, the fee structure on page 7 and include a category for first, second, and subsequent violations for DAA-initiated complaints. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your verbal and written comments. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. My name is Emma Taylor. I'm testifying on behalf of Ben the Ark. Um, first, we want to thank Councilmember Price's office for the work on the Fair Chance Initiative um, because we really do believe that LA can be the leader and the strongest enforcement in this initiative in the nation. Um, we want to make sure that LA, which has the largest number of people with criminal records in the nation and the largest population of homeless people in the nation, has a significant minimum guaranteed monetary award for the complainant in these cases, whether it's on the first violation or further along. Thank you very much for today. Thank you. Hi, my name is Erica Vargas. I work from Ho for Homeboy Industries. I was incarcerated, um, got out, did nearly five years of my life I was incarcerated. Upon my release, I started looking for employment and it was very hard for me to get it. It was sad for me to see that the employer would rather look at my past than look at my potential. What I am asking is to please make sure that the city of LA has the strongest fair chance ordinance possible and help someone like me. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay, Miguel, next, next up, please. Miguel uh, Luego, Lugo, David Andrade, Diamond Johnson, Jose Osuna. First of all, thank you, uh, Councilmember Price, for your continued effort and work on this initiative. It's been a long three years. I um, also want to thank Councilmember Krikorian, Cedillo, Harris Dawson, and Councilmember Martinez for their work on this and, and, and allowing us to give you input and working with us every step of the way. Um, my name is Jose Osuna. I serve as Director of External Affairs for Homeboy Industries. And I would just ask this committee and full council, when it gets to full council, to do something that I had to do about eight years ago, which was step out into the unknown. I finally made a decision to change my life. I didn't know what was on the other side of that, and I decided to take a bold leap. And the benefits have been extreme. I would ask this committee to do that today um, and moving forward, to step into the unknown and be the leader in the United States and make this ordinance the strongest one in the country. Um, I think that this ordinance definitely needs to have teeth. The enforcement piece definitely needs to be addressed. And we, are, and we have full confidence that this committee will do that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. My name is Miguel Lugo. I work at Homeway Industries. I'm with LA Boys. Uh, so I, I served 18 years in prison. And when, when, I, when, when I got out and I heard about a fair chance, I thought it was the greatest thing. They, I came out of the office for myself because it affects me every day of my life every time I go out there and look for a job. Because the Humboldt Industries is an 18-month program, and I'm there for 18 months. After 18 months, I do have to go out there and get a job, a regular job in society, to be part of society. And uh, um, the biggest thing for me is if it doesn't have a backbone, it will not stand when I go and look for a job. If, I, if it doesn't have strong, something real strong, which, is, which means... Just like when I got convicted, they needed to give me those 18 years in prison to serve those 18 years and be right with society. That's the same thing this ordinance needs. They need to have the backbone to be able to not just be paper, not just be another law that just passes and, and people just have it and, and they don't have to answer to nobody too. They have to answer to somebody, just like I did at one time, and I'm asking for that for everybody in, the, in, in, in this county. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Damon Johnson. I'm with Homeboy Industries. I'm a product of South Central Los Angeles. I have the, the privilege to work with the GRID program um, in partnership with the mayor's office as a navigator for the youth. So I work directly with the Department of Probation, and I'm going into the families' houses. So I see the direct effect of them not having employment. For instance, when I walk into a house and I see a lot of the families don't have pictures on the walls or on their tables, I know for a fact that this family is moving from place to place because they can't pay the rent. This is trickling down to the youth. Most of the teens that I deal with, they have kids as well. So this is pretty much causing them depression and anxiety because they can't find employment. At the same time, it, it makes them lose their motivation and also boost up the temptation in order for them to rob, steal, sell drugs, et cetera. Um, we need this ordinance to pass. We need it to pass because it's going to save our future. It's going to save our kids. You know what I mean? So we need you guys to, to give the, the best ordinance possible so we can get this going. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Hello, my name is David Andrade. I work for Homeboy Industries. Upon my release in 2013, I looked for work in felony-friendly companies. I served nine years of my sentence. Upon my release, I tried to find work. It wasn't that easy, and after my initial reviews and <coughs> resumes that I turned in, I never heard a response. So I went to Homeboy Industries and found an opportunity, got hired on to Homeboys. After three years, I now run the solar panel training program for Homeboy Industries. I'm returning the favor by actually finding training and support and job placements for our individuals that come through my program, as well as they have similar backgrounds that can relate to felony records, misdemeanor offenses. Now, it's not easy to find these guys' employments with the same kind of criminal history myself has. So with this fair chance ordinance, it would be a strong possibility to get most of my students placed in companies if they were to just actually acknowledge them with their knowledge that they have in solar panel installation and design. If we had more opportunities, we could have more people working. If we had more fair chance ordinance to get our people placed, they would be working a positive and healthy job instead of robbing and stealing. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, gentlemen. Martin Cruz, Adam Siegel, 
Rosemary Jenkins. Good afternoon, my name is Martin Cruz. I'm currently a resident at Bay Teshuba Rehabilitation Center and Reentry Program as well. And um, one of my biggest uh, efforts is um, being responsible. I'm a father and um, it's hard for me, I'm a felon as well, and it's hard for me uh, to find jobs and um, job after job after job. It's been uh, very difficult for me to obtain a job. And most of the jobs that I got were from friendly, friendly, uh, felony friendly uh, businesses. and. Um, I think it's um about that time that you know we get an opportunity for uh, uh opportunity for jobs everywhere you know like and um it's it's I'm a dad so it's difficult for me I'm young and I'm trying to get things together and it's I need more opportunity man you know like and um not all these not everyone gives the opportunity that we need and like homeboys and um you know I'm currently in a position where I'm going I'm about to go back into society and um I just need some help and. Hopefully, you know, we get your support. Thank you. Rosemary Jenkins, having worked for quite some time with prisoners and the formerly incarcerated, I have come to recognize the greater significance of the ban the box policy. LA must be a leader in fair and just hiring policies that afford second chances, whose impact will minimize recidivism and will also contribute to the betterment of our greater community. DWP's UPCT program has been a prime example of how successful such policy can be, expanding Ban the Box to the private as well as the public sector with stringent and meaningful enforcement mechanisms within the city of Los Angeles will be a meaningful move indeed. Thank you. Thank you. I am Adam Siegel. I'm a chaplain at Beit Teshuva uh, Rehabilitation and Reentry Center in West Los Angeles. Uh, I wanted to thank the committee for your dedicated effort uh, over time on this issue. Um, I'm also part <clears throat> of an inspired coalition, uh, LA Voice, um, and we're inspired. We're, we're, we're brought together. It's a wide support across uh, faith, Jewish, uh, Christian, Muslim. Uh, and we're all connected by uh, an openness of giving people a second, uh, second and fair chance, so maybe even third or fourth. Um, referring back to, uh, to uh, Councilman Price, to your opening remarks, um, these are, uh, this is a city, a state, and a national issue. There are eyes uh, on all levels uh, that will be looking to Los Angeles. Uh, and we have the opportunity, you have the opportunity to take a lead uh, in setting, uh, in crafting a policy that uh, really sets the standard. Uh, we're asking that uh, the enforcement piece is strong and that the, uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, thank you. We'll finish your thought? Uh, sure. Uh, so we're asking for the opportunities to, through the minimum enforcements and the, uh, the payouts to claimants is, is part of the, the, the ordinance uh, in a strong way. And that th this ordinance is really uh, holds uh, those that have a criminal record uh, accountable and uh, holds them to, to being personal responsible, personally responsible for their backgrounds. We ask that uh, the same goes for the businesses and the violators uh, of the policy. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Spindler, Herman, and Iwari Dewees. Yes, recently being in the joint a couple of times. I know I, I had a couple of people I talked to recently arrested, and they say the same thing. Well, what am I going to do when I get out of here? I got my goddamn jobs. So this is the ban the box I was talking about earlier. We have a chance to get rid of boxes. Think outside the box. No more boxes. No more boxes. Only work. Get rid of that goddamn box. You don't need that box. It don't matter. Like the, like the minister said. Like, like, like when they were on television a couple of weeks ago. And, and they said, I got to set an example. It doesn't mean that forgiveness. It's time to forgive everybody for all of their felonies. So, 
if, if you go and you, and you get a job, also let them expunge their criminal record after five years. Thank you. Woo, how do we expunge a criminal record? Well, let's take into consideration Mr. Spender's issue with law, as those brought up by the unforgiver, Herb Wesson Jr. He said, Herb Wesson said, I don't like that boy. We got to silence him from City Hall, so let's just put him. Mr. Chair, we need him to be on the subject. It is a subject. The subject has to do with criminals and forgiveness. Please. What's the topic? I'm not talking about Please criminals. Please complete your comment, sir. You've got 37 seconds. All the members here were talking about their criminal lives. I never did one fucking day in jail. But yeah, Ms. Spindler did one day in jail, posted $75,000 due to a, a detective fucking with him from LAPD. A detective was ordered to go arrest him in front of City Hall. Who followed him? Cornered him. Harassed his ass. And then the motherfucking Nava, 31586 for the record, then followed him to the courthouse where I and her Wilson sat there and listened to his crybaby issue not to forgive Mr. Spindler. So I know I'm fucking right about criminals. Hi, my name is Iwari DeWeese. I'm a member of ISLA, a representative of LA Voices, and I'm here to let you know about another situation that this bill affects. I don't have a felony conviction, but I actually had my identity stolen and associated with a felony conviction, which caused me severe distress when getting a job. I'm talking about after being interviewed, after being liked so much by this company, they allowed me to come in to work before my background check even cleared. I was then asked to leave in the middle of a work day after being there for two weeks and bonding with my team because my background came back dirty. Now, I was fortunate enough to have gone through the L.A. Superior Court process and have paperwork that showed that this conviction was not me, but let's say that just because I didn't meet the right police officer at some of my younger days when I was making mistakes, I had that record, I would have been then left for a job that I was competent in. I would have then been homeless within two months. So you're preventing poverty, and we need enforcement. We need a strict minimum. We need to have this bill be you know, it's got to be a representative of the American dream because that's what you're really giving people an opportunity to achieve here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. That concludes, that concludes the topic, the uh, comments on this item. We are going to uh, continue to deliberate on it. Uh, you are invited to uh, contact the office with any additional ideas, thoughts you may have. We will continue this uh, until our next meeting. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clerk. We'll call items six and eight together, please. Okay. Item number six, Workforce Termination Board and Chief Legislative Analyst to report relative to proposed Workforce Development Board local elected official agreement that complies with please, the please. It's, uh... Opportunity Act, Investment Opportunity Act. Additionally, a CLA report has been received uh, after the release of the agenda on this particular item. Item number eight, Economic and Workforce Development Department, CAO and CLA reports relative to the City of Los Angeles Workforce Development Board Year 17 Annual Plan, June 30th, 2016 through 2017, and related actions. Additionally, here, the CLA report was received post-release of, of the agenda. Okay, lady, lady and gentlemen. Let's, uh... Good afternoon. I'm Felipe Chavez with the CLA's office, and we have representatives of the CAO, um, the Economic and Workforce Development Department and in the Workforce Development Board here. Uh, before you is a CLA report recommending approval of the Workforce Development Board local elected officials four-year agreement. The agreement between the Workforce Development Board and the Mayor and the City Council is a requirement of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and establishes the roles and responsibilities for <laughs> policymaking, administration, and operation of the Workforce Development Programs in the City. Our office, on behalf of the council, negotiated with the Workforce Development Board and consulted with the mayor's office and the Economic and Workforce Development Department and city attorney. Um, as part of the negotiations, some of the changes that were made include changing or adding new definitions to the agreement. Uh, we revised language to emphasize the role of the city council as part of the LEO. Uh, we clarified the role of the uh, WDB executive director and added the LEO as an entity authorized to request briefings and documents from Workforce Development Board and WIO Administrator. 
We added language acknowledging that the city attorney is counsel, counsel for both the Leo and WDB. Removed language that limited the authority of the WDB to solicit grant funds from public agencies. And we inserted language requesting quarterly reports from uh, the Workforce Development Board for the expenditure of funds received from private donations. Uh, the changes recommended by our office were presented to representatives of the Workforce Development Board, Mayor's Office, and EWDD on May 25th, 2016, and subsequently approved by the board on June 3rd, 2016. Our office recommends approval of the uh, Workforce Development Board, a Leo four-year agreement. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sedil, any questions at this time? Mr. Dorian, any questions? Okay, then we will uh, receive and approve the CLA report recommendations. Thank That'll you. be the order. Thank you. Additionally, Mr. Chair, on item number eight, uh, there are extensive recommendations in the uh, CAO uh, report. Do we also want to take that up in terms of the technical, approve those two in order to? We, we still need to yes, go we, through item number eight. Right, we just did six. Okay. So, sure okay. We, all right. Okay. Yes. Okay. Item number eight, um, there are two, two reports for item number eight. There's a CLA, uh, CLA report that focuses on policies. Uh, that are included in the annual plan, and there's a CAO report that focuses on the budget um, and the remaining parts of the annual plan. Um, uh, this item, for uh, our report basically recommends approval of the four new policies that are contained in the Workforce Development Board Program Year 2016-17 Annual Plan. Uh, these new policies are new requirements of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act or, or, or the Mayor's Executive, Executive Directive Number 7. Um, the proposed new policies, and I'll just list the policies, are the administrative cost limitation policy, incumbent worker training policy, transitional jobs policy, and the green economy policy. Uh, the annual plan also contains a list of existing policies and a list of 23 additional policies that were revised for compliance with the WIOA. All of the existing policies, uh, revised, proposed, and new policies can be found in the program year 2016-17 Work, workforce Development uh, Board Annual Plan. We recommend approval of these new policies in as much as they provide greater oversight of the funds and are required by the WIOA and our Executive Directive Number 7. Yes. And for Item 8, Shraf Yamir from the CAO's office, you do have also a CAO report um, regarding the budget in the annual plan. Um, and I'll give you a brief overview if you have any questions. We'll take them after that. Um, the year 17 annual plan is comprised of approximately $68.8 million to fund EWDD's workforce development strategies and activities for the program year 17. The funding sources consist primarily of Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act formula and competitive grants, Los Angeles County grants, various special funds and competitive grants, and the City General Fund as well. The LA Workforce Development Board, or WDB, approved the year 17 annual plan on June 1st, 2016, following the required 30-day public comment period. The rapid response allocation amount in the year 17 annual plan is the current year amount as an estimate because the actual amount for year 17 was not released at the time the draft plan was put together. What's the estimate? I'm sorry? How much is the estimate? The estimate is um, 1.3 million. It's, on the, it's in the CAO report as well. 1.3 million is placed as the placeholder amount. And I think typically it ends up coming in even slightly higher, at least it did in the, the last year. Um, EWDD also intends to report back uh, to the Workforce Development Board, Council, and Mayor um, regarding any changes to the annual plan, including the grant amounts and once they actually come in, um, also through the carry-in report, which comes later in the program year. The Year 17 Annual Plan highlights include continued focus on previously established priorities, including but not limited to service requirements for individuals with disabilities, individuals experiencing homelessness, veterans, individuals undergoing reentry after incarceration, and in individuals receiving services through the integrated service delivery model. In addition, the Annual Plan seeks to support the Mayor's recommendations to the Workforce Development Board by improving access to the workforce development system through Los Angeles Community Colleges and Libraries, expanding service capacity for underserved populations, engaging with the business, education, and labor communities, and providing summer employment and related skills training to approximately 15,000 Los Angeles youth. 
the general funded programs, which were approved in the adopted 16-17 um, city budget, include summer youth employment program, gang injunction curfew settlement, and funding for the LA Rise Los Angeles Regional Initiative for Social Enterprise to expand employment development services for individuals experiencing homelessness. So that's my general overview. If we have any questions, we can take them. Nope. Yeah, Mr. Still no. Still okay? Um, with that, I think we will uh, accept the uh, report. from the CLA and the CAO. We'll include those recommendations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, anything else before us at this time? Uh, that is it, Mr. Chair. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Yeah. Here.